Hi everyone, it's Jack Bell with another video, and today I'm going to be talking about Alibaba, a stock that gets a ton of attention in the, the stock picking world, and for good reason, it seems like there's a really nice opportunity here on the service level, and perhaps we should dig a bit deeper. Chinese e-commerce giant is down 57% in the past five years, down nearly 80% from its highs in October 2020, even it's basically half from its 52 week highs. Oh, and only in the past year, from $121 to now where it sits at 68 just off its 52-week low. The stats really don't back it up here, but since 2020, there's been massively increased competition with Pinduoduo and with Timu in particular, which is becoming more of an international presence. They have definitely weaker margins. There was the fiasco of the Ant Group IPO in 2021, and a realisation that there is a real obvious problem with Chinese government interference. Alibaba was really the test case for this. However, what Pinduoduo has shown that it's actually nearly back to its 2021 highs. It's something like 5x over the medium over the last couple of years. Stocks had a fantastic year last year. It was up over 40%, where Alibaba was down 40%. So sort it of proves that the government fact that is not the only thing at play here. All Chinese companies are effectively at risk of some state interference. Pinduoduo is no different to Alibaba in that sense. However, it's had a fantastic year off the back of some growth, despite some pretty concerning short reports. So I don't think the government interference really paints the full picture of this business and why it is so cheap because right now it's trading at a trailing price of earnings of under 10 with some strong growth tailwinds, some long-term nice tailwinds behind it. So let's analyze the business, analyze some consumer trends going forward, what it's going to be doing with all this money, look at its valuation, etc. and then decide this is a buy, sell or hold going forward. The biggest investment case for Alibaba mostly presented is valuation just that there is a mispricing event going on here. Currently, the company has just shy of $30 billion in free cash flow or $174 billion market cap. These free cash flow numbers are still not even as high as the numbers that were in 2021. They've had a decent recovery in the last year. That's a six times price of cash flow, or around six. That's about the cheapest you could have ever, you could have ever got Alibaba far. In fact, it is the cheapest price earnings ratio. It's not much lower than it was in 2023, but it's still significantly lower than five-year averages, although they are a little skewed by 2022. But if you just do like back the envelope calculation on the rest of the years, you can see it's significantly lower. Five-year price to cash flow is significantly lower the five-year average than the current cash flow, price of book, price of forward earnings, peg, earnings yield. Currently, you know, a $30 billion free cash flow on a $174 billion company. That's something like a 15, 16% free cash flow yield. That is absolutely outrageous for a company of this quality, in my opinion. So clearly investment case number one and by far the most overriding thing is this is just a straight up value investment. It is significantly cheaper than the sum of its parts should be. Alibaba is really a collection of businesses all in sort of the same spaces. They have a huge presence in Chinese retail, Tmall and Taobao being the main things here. In international commerce, they of course have AliExpress, which is a behemoth in its own right. They have the local consumer services. They have Alibaba Cloud, which is a segment that we'll turn around a bit more, but I've been really disappointed with going forward. They have Know. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, apologies, which is the logistics business, which has potential to IPO in the future, perhaps. Maybe maybe if it ever gets past the stuff that happened with Ant Group, that's probably a bit different because it's payments. That's an incredible business in its own right. That's the logistics arm. And of course, as digital media and entertainment, it really is quite similar to Amazon with a couple of other arms, of course, being in China. And these businesses have had very fortunes over the last few years, but in general, have trended in one direction, that's upwards. As we saw with many other e-commerce companies, it's not been a fantastic year to be in e-commerce growth-wise. Taobao and Tmall grew only 4% in terms of revenue year over year. And EBITDA, which is a strange metric I grant you, normally it would be EBITDA, so this is just EBITDA without the depreciation, was up 3% year over year. But this is the vast majority of the EBITDA for the whole company. Most of the other business segments are loss making or not making appreciable profit com compared to this. And this all, of course, in Chinese Yuan. So roughly divided by six for dollars or something like that, six and a half, depending on the exchange rate right now. The most impressive segment in terms of revenue growth was the Alibaba International Digital Commerce Group, so basically AliExpress and some others. That was up 53% year over year in, ter in terms of revenue. It's absolutely fantastic. Definitely trending in the right direction. And in terms of EBIT, so let's call it profit for to save me I have to say that acronym over and over again, was up 49% year over year, which is again really impressive. Roughly half the losses there. And we can sort of allow these losses when they're growing so much and it's, it can be accepted in the space of a wider conglomerate. 
Look, it's going to group up 16%, but took quite a large loss. And the smart logistics network was up 25% year over year. And that is really trending in the right direction. Starting to make some nice profit. Profit was up 625% year over year. That's really going in the right direction as a promising business segment. As I mentioned, the Alibaba cloud segment was something I had really, really high hopes for a couple of years ago for this business, and the growth has just not really materialized in the last few years. So while it's a very big number, nearly $4 billion of revenue in the most recent quarter, or the most recent set of results we have, that was only an increase of 2% year over year. Over year. Not overly impressive at all. Now, this is a potentially high growth and also high growth margin business segment going forward as more and more of the Chinese economy requires digitalization more so than even is now because the, we'll talk about it in a minute but the middle class in China is growing at a rapid rate and will continue to grow and if these services will to continue to increase they also have developed a lot in AI they are the largest open source developer communities or one of in China but overall what really needs to happen is they need to be producing more growth from the cloud revenue and while the revenue has increased to a significant amount you know they turn about 16 built 15 billion dollar run rate year over year it's not really producing the sort of gross margins that i would like to see or the sort of revenue growth would like to see i mean three percent is pretty puny compared to the cloud giants in in the us china recently announced that its, its gdp growth or its real gdp growth was up to 5.2 percent 2023 a big bounce from 2022 where alibaba suffered a lot of its problems where it was only three percent gdp growth and it must be said basically every every stock or basically every high growth stock in inverted commas had majorly suffered in 2022 alibaba suffered more than most perhaps these china gdp numbers you know five percent last year four percent this year four percent going forward till probably the end of the decade or around four percent is not absolutely staggering by any means, but it's better than most major economies for sure and will really help Alibaba's growth tailwinds going forward that this is a growing economy with money to spend on infrastructure. I think perhaps the most crucial tailwind other than infrastructure going into cloud spending, more people wanting to, to shop online, is middle class and affluent consumers are only going to be growing over the medium term. The middle class is due to expand in China significantly and around 80 million MAC, which is middle class and African consumers, with over 70% from lower tier cities. As these lower city, tier cities become more developed, Alibaba can build out their base there. This is a massive tail when many people have talked about the growth of the middle class in China for a long time, but I think it's really becoming more prevalent now. As the middle class expands, the demand for shop, online shopping only increases, the demand for cloud services and things like that only increases. This can be a major tailwind for, for Alibaba in the next few years, in my opinion. Obviously, talking about tailwinds and future growth prospects for this business, where it's going to be in the short to medium term, it's absolutely essential when you're looking at any business case. But I think it doesn't really matter because this business is priced to go bankrupt and it is clearly not going bankrupt. Right now, it has over $50 billion in net cash. That is absolutely outrageous. This is a business that's doing $30 billion in free cash flow and has nearly a third of its market cap in cash. If it starts buying back shares, in addition to its very small dividend, or basically negligent dividend at this point, but if it starts buying back shares, which they are already doing, just not really in the quantities you want to be doing, as well as investing in the rest of the business, this could be an absolute earnings per share growth behemoth. This has been a fantastic business to own for many periods of time, just hasn't been for the last few years. Obviously, because sentiment on China and investing in Chinese companies is significantly down. However, I think it's sort of, there's a margin of safety building there. Almost a third of the market cap in net cash and providing $30 billion in cash flow a year is absolutely outrageous for these sort of prices, in my opinion. That is really the justification for the investment here. I've held Alibaba since around $80, $85. So you can call me a shareholder or you can call me a bag holder. But I think I haven't really had to it. It was only a 1% position or so. I just sort of let it sit there. But now sort of looking at the pricing, I find it really hard to resist. There are nice opportunities in the stock market. I've recently invested in LVMH, which I'm going to talk about in a couple of days. But it's hard not to deploy some cash into Alibaba at the minute because it is just so painfully cheap. And while there are definitely problems with you know, increased competition and potential Chinese government interference. I really just think there's enough margin of safety here for this business. I think it has real potential to go back to $100 very soon when people start to wake up to this, that it's trading at six times cash flow, has $50 billion in net cash and has decent growth, growth prospects going forward. That is just absolutely silly in my opinion. So 
clearly the investment case here is that it's, it's just significantly mispriced. It has been, well, people have been saying this since, you know, it was $200. But in my opinion, this is all just gone a bit far now. And I think that this is a reasonable time to be investing in Alibaba, or at least that's what I'm going to be doing with my money. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, so you should do your own due diligence. Buy stocks because you want to, not because I say so. Do your own research and due diligence, or even better, contact a registered financial advisor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like and subscribe and join the video. I'll see you next time.